I'm Leslie. Thank you for dropping in to watch my Spanish property makeovers phase two. Hope you enjoy it. The garden area is pretty much finished. If you didn't see the video for phase one, then here's just a little glimpse at what went on there. Here I am, midway through phase two. I've just arrived back from being at the coast in Chiclana de la Frontera, where I had another property that I've just sold. So I've had to move a lot of my belongings from there up to here, adding to the chaos. Also, as hasn't helped, is that there was a delay on the tiles. The tile shop gave me a date of delivery and then called to say it would be a month later. So yeah, huge delays. <laughs> Never mind, I'm trying to keep calm. Now to clear the dining kitchen area, ready to get all the tiles taken off the walls in the kitchen and these dining area floor tiles up. Looking at it now, it doesn't look too bad actually. Using the office as a permanent, as a semi-permanent kitchen at the minute, and that's the new oven. I'm liking that. Um. Oh God, look, look. How am I supposed to live in this? Oh la la, so this is the kitchen. <laughs> there we go. Um everything piled out here. Actually, I think I'm like in this little balcony without all those plants on it. It looks much less cluttered. And then the garden, because I've sold the other house, I've brought the garden furniture from there, which was always the plan, and that goes so much better with this garden. And then the um, the table there will need to find a new home for that. Ah, oh, dear. The scrapyard. So I found this place because I was talking to somebody I know about a log burner. And they said they'd seen a nice one here. I didn't even know the place existed. Oh my goodness. And now I'm getting old. I'm turning into my dad. I'm getting excited about finding a scrapyard. So I've bought the log burner. It was stood here. Um, you've seen that on my video. And I am also going to show you the bits that I've bought, that I've just bought for my front door. Some iron to put in the door. Oh, look at this desk. Ooh. Look, such interesting articles. In fact, here's what I bought. Little inserts like this to go in my door. Okay. There they are. These. Six of those. Wait till you see the transformation. Once they're all painted up. So here's the log burner that I purchased from the scrapyard. It was 470 euros. I love it because you can cook on the top of it. Right, I've hosed it down because it was full of grease at the bottom. There must have been grease stood in it for years. And then I used some wire wool to clean it and a special liquid. I, I actually tried acetone as well, which I'd read that worked. But I did a combination of different things to try to clean it up. And now what you see me doing is putting some black um, stove polish on it, which really brings it back to its original colour. Church bells for the ferrier. That's that bell horn is indicating that it's time for mass. Um, after mass, it's party time. <laughs> Okay, so I've just come in to see Antonio in the Taller de Madera, the wood place. He's the joiner, um, and this is the 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 metal squares <laughs> that I found in the scrapyard that he's put into a frame. So he's been to the ironmonger to put them in the frame, which are then going to go into the door. This is my door frame. Look at this place. It's fantastic. I love it. His dad's not here. He normally works with his dad. So there's two Antonios, father and son. Look at all the wood. Look. This, he, tells, he tells me this, this is mine. <laughs> this is my wood for my door. Look at all these tools. 
And there's a lot of old things. <laughs> cassette player, <laughs> just in case I get up. There's his dad. That's Antonio. Seriously demented. This is my cooking facility at the minute. Going mad. Um, yeah, the old hob balanced on top of the gas bottle in a random place. Um, I've just been fried onions. Yeah, it's just completely minging. And then this morning, the electrician came to mark out the points. This one here, there was already a socket there, so I've just decided to lower it. The island is going to be here on the floor, here on the floor, and there's going to be a socket in there in case I decide to put the fridge in there. These so this socket's going to be reduced to a two from a triple and moved along a bit. You see my arrows. That's for the oven. This is for the extractor. Um, and another socket there, and then we've got a dishwasher here and plumbing needs to be lowered to get sink in. That's it. So tiles have arrived. We've just been unloading all of the tiles off the lorry, which hasn't been an easy job. And in the midst of all the mess, I decided to create a mood board. <laughs> so the tiles, this one looks very white, but they have actually got like a marbly streak through them. And then we've got these patterned ones that have like a raised pattern on them, which are for the wall around the kitchen. And then the coordinating ones with them that are a bit more plain. And they, um, they are for the kitchen worktops and the rest of the wall. So I need wood to soften it. It definitely needs some wood and a couple of dark colours. So wood and brass combined with this plainness and hoping is going to work. So here we've got the beams, the progress. I can't remember how far along I was on the last video, but these have been sanded and we're going to be plasterboarding in these, in between the beams, the builders recommended. And this is um, these holes where we've replaced a couple of the dodgy beams and dug the wall out. I think that's where the snakes have been living. Um, okay. And oh my lord, again, I've just jumped over that and screamed the bloody place down. I didn't know it was there, I nearly slept on it. Oh heck, builders are in, I'm trying to get ready. Um, I can't shut the door for any privacy because there's some beams coming in. And um, there's dust and fun and games. Oh, but there's going to be big improvements by the end of today. Fingers crossed. I do think that I'd forgotten to mention you to you about what's happened here. So this was all filled in up until the bricks. The bricks um, protruded out from the wall quite a lot. So they've been leveled off, ready to be plastered. And um, we've cut this, the builders cut this hole in the wall here. Uh, the walls are sloped on the inside, so it can't be square, but I'm quite pleased actually, I like it like that. So that's to give space to expose the pipe. It will make it more effective when I put the log burner in, and it means that I can cook on top of the Lego log burner, because um, it has got some rings on the top to cook on. Woohoo! So, so, so. <laughs> Um, tiles. I have to say, I have been bringing things in, holding dark wood against these tiles because the floor doesn't contrast, not perfectly match with the wall tiles. Um, but I know it will be great once it's not right next to them because the kitchen unit is going to be here and it's going to be dark wood to give that nice contrast. I'm confident it's going to work. My neighbour Graham did what my dad used to always do, walked in and went, mm, mm, not bad, not bad, but not keen on your choice of tiles. I suppose you're a woman, huh? Okay, I said, just hold your horses, wait, because it's not about the one item. It's not about the pattern, the colour, it's about how everything works together. So I tried to explain that to him. 
So what else I've been thinking about with regards to colours and things is that I always based um, design, like I'm a top designer or something, absolutely not, but my own things that I do, I've always tried to base like 60% main, more neutral colour, 30% straight, slightly stronger colour and 10% your accent colour. So in this room, it's going to be sort of white beige is just going to be the 60%, the 30% is going to be dark wood, and the 10% of colour is going to be turquoise, deep turquoise with probably a little bit of a mix of goldy colours as well, which is where this comes in. I know you might think it's yellow, but I'm classing it as tying it in with the brass shades, which I'm going to put around. So fingers crossed, it's going to all work out. Another thing I like to do is do things in stages. I'm not very good at just planning it all out in advance. I've got the floor tiles, got them down on the wall before I've decided on what worktop I'm having. Because my original plan was to have a tile worktop and I realised it's just going to be too white and stark. I need some wood. So I'm doing that stage by stage. Now the big decision is what colour fridge to have. Because I'm going to have over in the far corner a freestanding tall fridge. Um, retro style and I, I'm thinking I've seen one that I love and it's like a dark greenish turquoise -y. it's not the same turquoise as the rest of the colour I'm having but it'll stop it looking quite so twee I hope um, so I'm, I'm, again I'm waiting can you hear that speaker that's the what day is it Saturday I don't remember if it's a fruit and veg man or fish man coming around um, so yep that's where I am so far <laughs> Hopefully I'm going to see some big changes soon because it is driving me crazy. So I've marked the floor out. So as I said, I put dishwasher here and um, just make sure that I can walk past here okay. And I think if I go any further that way, it's going to be a bit awkward. And then I've put green tape on the tiles as to where I want the walls building. Then there'll be shelves within them and the wooden worktop on the top. So I've marked the green tape so they know where to put the walls. Um, and I've put this trolley here because there's going to be, it's going to come along and there's going to be an island here. So I've put this trolley right where the island's going to be to make sure it's not going to get my nerves, it's not too far out as I walk around from here to here to where the dining table will be. Okay, so I've actually put a physical object there to check. We might be able to go a little bit longer with that to get more workshop space. Let's see. And my own way of telling the builders what I want, taped out on the floor where I want everything. I've just dragged the cooker over now so that I can have a look at how that's going to look. And I'm, I'm waiting for the extractor fan to come as well. And I've marked on the floor where the units will go and on the walls are where the shelves are going to go inside of the units because it's going to be a built kitchen um, out of bricks and mortar as opposed to wood. Thank you so much for watching the video. I do hope you enjoyed it. Now, I want to say that there were no snakes harmed during the filming or after or before. So when a snake was found, we would take it up to the countryside, to the olive groves and release them. I didn't actually do it. I really don't want to carry a snake in my car or on foot. So the builder or a friend of mine took them up there as well. Here I am sat amongst a whole load of rubble outside my front door. Now, in the next video, phase three, you will see hopefully the new front door with the little inserts in and a nice shade of wait and see have a guess below what color do you think the front door is going to be um so thank you for, for, for watching it if you did enjoy it please subscribe here and follow the videos to to see to see more of what i'm going to do okay see you soon